Hi, and welcome back to our last in our series as we keep moving through the season of Lent and take a deeper dive into the text from the previous Sunday. So as you'll recall, this past Sunday, we had the story of um, Mary washing Jesus' feet with really expensive perfume. You remember that it was made with pure nard and had a beautiful fragrance that filled the entire room and that she not only used that perfume, but she wiped Jesus' feet with her hair. What a beautiful and intimate gesture that was and that it was also um, a symbol, that act was a symbol of abundant love and grace. And so as things move on further into the future, uh, in the days to come in the life of Jesus, Jesus is going to give his disciples what he has already been given by Mary, another act of um, true abundance. He will embody the love that he has experienced in this particular story. Um, uh, one of our uh, most well-known Lutheran biblical scholars from Luther Seminary, Caroline Lewis, has often been known to say that in this particular act of, of um, wiping Jesus' feet, this anointing, Mary loves Jesus into his future. And I just think that's such a beautiful way of putting it, that she loves Jesus into his future. And so there's a couple of things for us to think about um, in response to this story. And that is um, to ask ourselves, how will we respond to the abundance and lavishness of God's grace and God's mercy and God's love as we finish moving through this Lenten season? How will we maintain our obedience and what kind of fruits are we bearing in these last days of Lent? And how will all of that lead to metanoia, transformation and repentance to us being truly changed our our standpoints and our viewpoints and our perspectives being changed and the question that i really want you to think about is who is loving you into your future how does our commitment to god happen because we are loved because of being loved and how do we embody that love as we move forward? And I also wonder who needs your love to live into their future? You know, there's a mutuality of love that happens that we rely on and we want and need to be open and not resistant to that love because we are worthy of that great love that comes to us. So love being shared by someone is one way that God loves us. And we carry that love with us as we move into the final events of Jesus' life, into Holy Week, into Jerusalem, into that last night and day of Jesus' life. And so as you consider some of these questions about who is loving you into your future and who needs you to love them into theirs and what that means for us and what it's going to look like, my prayer for you is that you will continue to be inspired by the words that we hear, not just from Jesus, but from those who care for him, by the acts that we witness and by what we know is coming next. I would also like to take this opportunity to encourage you strongly to make being part of worship a priority during Holy Week. We'll begin this Sunday with a Sunday of the Passion Palm Sunday. We'll start with the palms and then move into a telling of the Passion story in a group narrative format. And then as we move into Holy Week, we will have worship on Monday, Thursday at noon and at 7. We'll also have worship on Good Friday at noon and at 7. 
a reminder for you that the seven o'clock service on Good Friday is not going to be the most child friendly. We expect it to be an incredibly moving and meaningful service, but probably something that would only be appropriate for confirmation age kids and up. We uh, will have uh, a chance for folks to have a nursery available for that service if you attend with youngsters. And then, of course, on Easter Sunday morning, we will have worship at 6.30, 8.45, and 10.45 with a pancake breakfast um, served by our youth in between um, those, before those uh, uh, last two services and after the first one. So I would encourage you to make it a priority to be part of the worshiping life of this congregation during this Holy Week and Easter celebration because um, you don't want to miss out on the meaningful things that happen, particularly on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. They help to make our celebrations on Easter Sunday that much more meaningful. When you go from the um, directly from the Hosannas to the big celebrations on Easter Sunday, you miss the really meaningful stuff that happens in between there. And yes, it's difficult. Yes, it's sad. Yes, it makes us feel uncomfortable. And yet, we are called to walk with Jesus as we move to the cross. So I hope that you'll make it a priority to join us for worship either here or online and pray that the conclusion of your Lenten season will be one that will continue to fill you with richness and with opportunities for growth. God's peace be with you.